so this is the last part of this video and i hope you guys have learned a lot from this video and i really hope it help you guys to paint a portrait basically so in this part i am going to show you guys how to enhance your artwork not with painting but with some other editing skills in photoshop well i have already shown you guys this before like yeah really before and i think i'm going to leave a link in the description where you can get that video but i'm still going to show you guys some of them right here and might even be able to add some to it so after doing everything on your artwork and you are done with everything you want to do on your artwork so first now before i do this i'm going to hide this because that is kind of like nasty or let you say let's leave it that way but okay i'm going to hide the i'm going to hide the color layer which we have because we don't need it anymore so all we have is the background and just the artwork itself so for a moment i'm just going to turn off the background layer but before i do that i'm going to place my selection on the last layer these two i don't need it so this is going to merge everything together and sorry if i couldn't um, make a pop-up of the keys anymore which i will be using you know usually on my videos whenever i make use of any shortcut keys it always pop up at the bottom of my video but this time just due to the fact that i'm working on changing the channel name so i just have to push everything for the meantime and you know get to do all these then i go back and fixing everything to come up so i'm just going to hide this layer for some time then after hiding it i'm going to press ctrl shift alt plus e to make a copy a merge copy of just only the subject and not the background so i'm going to hide this for now i'm going to hit that key and it's going to create a merge copy and i'm going to reveal that back again so i can turn off this layer and just drag a copy of this background up to that part or layers let's keep a copy and let's turn that off so i'm going to highlight everything hold and select this line one and hold and shift and select that and hit on ctrl g and and hit on and just save name that finalize or final anyone which is really going to be better um final and i'm just going to turn that off just like that but it doesn't really matter because it's below so i'm just going to select this layer now it's time to fix this blurry edge that we have here so i'm going to switch to my tablet or you can make use of mouse if you wish so now look at the blur to in your two palettes so select the blur to and increase the size of it now make sure that you're not sampling all layer that is it's unchecked so set that to 100 and now go around the edges and use it to blur out the edges so as you can see as i'm going around here it's blurring out the edges now you're trying to add a little bit of a depth of field now if it's too sharp it's not really going to make any sense at all it's really going to be stand out from the background just looks like something you cut with the pen to and add it to your background but with this you're adding a little bit of a depth of field and you're softening that edges adding a little bit of feathering to the edges to make your artwork look so good and nice so i'm just going to do this around so got this okay so now you can see what we have here looking so nice unlike what we have before now this has fixed a lot of your edge so that is the first step i always take when i finish my portrait giving it a final touch so the next step i'm going to be doing is for me to 
adjust the colors which i still show you guys how to adjust the colors now for the lips you really don't have to worry about the lips because the lips is not supposed to be like this really not supposed to be like that but i'm going to be showing you guys how to do that because if i try to make everything into this video it's going to be way more longer than you expected and not just longer you won't be able to grab everything just at once so i just concentrate more on the skin for you guys to really understand how to paint skin and stick around because i'm going to be showing you guys how to work on the mouth and just the eyes so now we are done with that part the outlining which is now really looking so nice you can take us your time you can go around again round around to properly fix it but i'm really cool with this so now it's time to fix the color so we have several ways of fixing these colors you can make use of the hue saturation you can make use of the color balance and you can also make use of the camera raw filter also the selective color but i'm just going to show you the one of the hue saturation and the camera raw filter so Click on the new adjustment layer icon and add up a hue and saturation layer. From the hue, you can adjust the colors to the way you want it to be. Now, before you start doing this, you have to check your reference to see how your reference is looking. You want to match it with your, your reference. But for this, I'm not going to be matching it with my reference. I'm just going to do it something in a way that you guys are really going to see what I just do. So, I'm just going to do something around this so the hue is just for you to change the colors and the saturation is for you to add more colors to it and the light is just for you to make it light or make it dark so i'm going to keep it somewhere around zero i don't need this so i'm going to keep that to zero and reduce the saturation a bit something like this now you can see we are losing those details now seems like this is not really working out so well the way we really expect it to be now i'm going to leave that i'm going to leave that then i'm going to turn this off for now next thing i'm going to select both layers and i'm going to hit on ctrl e to merge we select both layers and hit on ctrl e to merge those layers now i want to add a little bit of texture or sharpening to the artwork and in order to do this now this process is just for you in case you want to print your artwork you just have to go through this process to use it in printing your artwork so now that i have merged both layers i'm going to make another copy of it and i'm going to set the blend mode of this to vivid light so i'm going to set that to vivid light now everything has been destroyed is being destructive right now really it's not really making any sense so go over to filter all the other and then high pass now we are about to add a little bit of a sharpening to this image making it look more sharp the way than the way it is so i'm going to reduce this the higher you go the more sharper your image is really going to be so i'm going to turn off the preview i'm um, just keep that for now i'm going to reduce this somewhere around two is okay i'm going to add it in a way that you are really going to see but make sure not to go higher when you are doing this in yours so i'm going to click ok so this is what we have before and this is what we have after now if you can't see it on other places just look closely to the eyes this is what we have before and this is what we have after adding a whole lot of sharpness to your as well now there are some other things i do i always make use of some other plugins go to filter and the red field and i make use of all this but since it's not present in yours i have to stick with what <clears throat> to what is available in photoshop so now that i have that here i'm going to select both layers again and hit on ctrl e to merge them and i'm going to right click and create set that to what convert to smart object now i want to tweak the colors with the camera roll filter so that i'm really going to get a lot of controls over my artwork so go over to filter and the use of this camera of this smart object that i convert layer to it's because if i want to modify the filter that i just added i can go back and modify that to make me to apply a non-destructive filter to my layer so i will go over to filter and camera roll filter <coughs> so if you are on the latest version of photoshop your camera roll should be looking something like this but if you're on the older version it's really going to be lot of different but don't be, don't worry or don't get scared because everything remain the same so i'm going to play with the hue right here so i want to play around with the red because 
this artwork is lacking a little bit of red so when i come down to this part let you see so we're adding a little bit of red to it just like that now you can play around with the yellows but let, let me give it a little bit of orange so that you can really see what's going on right so you don't really need to make it look exactly like how i'm doing mine because right now i'm doing everything for you as you can see it so that you'll be able to see it very well so you can do something that is really going to match your artwork not really what i'm doing right now so i'm going to add a little bit of red so we don't really need much of greens right here and we don't really have any we don't have yellows i mean to say so let us see there's no much yellows going on so i'm going to keep it that way so we don't have greens aqua blues and purples there is nothing like all the stuff that's working right here so now head over to the saturation you can increase the red and you can decrease the red i can increase decrease it and increase it so i'm going to reduce the red a little bit because the red at that point is really too much so i'm going to reduce it somewhere around minus 10 and bring down the orange a little bit now this is okay now you can really switch between the before and the after because you have the ability to do that so this is what we are having before and this is what we are having after now you can go a whole lot of extreme to do this in the way you want it it's just how you really want your artwork to look like so this is fine by me i'm going to hit on okay now there is one amazing thing i really want to show you guys and i would love you guys to try this but before i show you that now let's see so this is where we have the smart filter camera roll so now you can double click on it and you go back into the camera roll filter to edit your artwork so i'm going to turn this off so that is what we have before and this is what we have after now the difference is this so let me turn this off and turn on the hue saturation you can see that they are of the same right nothing much it's missing just depend on how you want them to be so you can make use of the camera roll you can make use of the hue saturation the difference between the camera roll and the hue saturation is that the hue saturation did not give you the ability to play with each and every color well it's there but i didn't show you like if you double click on the hue saturation layers you can go by you can play around with each and every one of them but you might get confused with it so you can stick to the camera roll filter or continue with the hue saturation layer now there is something i always add to most of my recent artwork blur filters i'm really going to show you how to do that now there is a way you can do that so click on that still convert it to a smart object go up to filter blur gallery and tilt shift if i'm correct let's see no irish blur iris i mean to say uh, i'm just going to cancel that go up to filter blur and then iris blur yeah so this is it now what it does is that everything outside of this ellipse you have right here it's going to be blood and everything inside of this ellipse it's going to retain its normal way the way it's going to be the way it is so i want to blur somewhere around not just i just want the whole concentration to be only on the face so i'm going to rotate this like this so just like that and you can move it so i want the concentration to be more on this part of the face and so so I'm, now this is going to make the transition smooth or make it let me increase this so much so that you can really see all right so if i bring this in you can see right so if i take it out you can see how hard the edge is so bringing it in is going to make a, a smooth transition and taking it out is going to create hard edges so i just want it around somewhere around all this part and i'm going to reduce the blur to somewhere around this not something that's really going to be much but something that you guys can see so i'm going to take this in a little bit and move it to this part so now this might not really be cool or not really look great in this artwork but let me tell you the fact that if you make use of this on an artwork that have a background a different background something like the outward background or nice background it's really going to be awesome like the artwork has a thumbnail i use this thumbnail of this portrait tutorial you can see that i make use of this 
method on that part and it's really making any sense so this brings me to one last thing i'm really going to be showing you guys that is the vignetting now you can do the vignetting in the camera or filter but most times i really don't want to make use of that vignetting i like doing something more extra and so on well let me show you the vignetting in the camera or filter so i'm going to double click on the camera or filter right here i don't want to see this again so i'm going to click on ok camera filter is going to open up now scroll all the way to the down and go over to effect and come down to the vignetting so this is going to add up a black vignetting to your artwork and this is going to add up a white now a little bit of cropping giving a more concentration to the face of your artwork depending on how you apply that so i'm not going to use this i'm going to hit on cancel because i don't need that now the new way i always create a vignetting is this method i go over to this adjustment layer icon and i create a new solid and i fill that in with black now you can fill it with any color either white or so on fill it with any color fill that with black and i go over to shape to and I select the ellipse tool and I create an ellipse just like this and I hit on ctrl T and I place it at the middle and I transform from there to somewhere around this I somewhere around this oh, this is okay now all I, all, I, all I always do I hit on hold on ctrl and click on the thumbnail of the ellipse to create a selection of the ellipse then I turn off the ellipse layer because I don't need it anymore now I go down to the solid fill I just created and select the layer mask. And with my foreground color set to black, I hit Alt and Backspace. Now it's going to fill that place on the layer mask, revealing the shape of the ellipse. Now it's still okay when you hit on Ctrl D to deselect. Now it might not really be the way you want the size of the ellipse to be. Well, you can still adjust it. So with the layer mask selected, you can hit on Ctrl T and you can control the ellipse. So I'm going to transform this to somewhere around here and kind of like rotate it a little bit and give it something like this now look at this this is having a, hot, a nice kind of like a sharp edge right which is not really making any sense now and it's not really blending with the background isn't it so what you have to do though if you can't see this mask property is just double click on it and this it's going to come up just hit on view mask properties and this is going to pop up now set this to all the way 100 to feather it the way it's really going to be now you don't really have to take it that high but just how you really want it to so let me just quickly change this to somewhere around red so that we can really see a dark red so that we can really see what is going on right here so now you can just click on the mask again so the more you feather it the more blurry it's really going to be now to make it really look cool you can reduce the density of the mask that is going to be the transparency of the mask and so on but in order of not in order for you not to do that because it's really not going to make any sense at that point so all you just have to do select the main layer itself and go over to the opacity and reduce the opacity to somewhere around this and this is going to create a nice effect for you and your photoshop that is really going to make sense now let me show you some of these some of the artwork i have made use of this effect on well i'm not really sure if i have them right here but let me really, let me really check they might be on my other pc but let me just check if i can see some of them here so 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 let's see i really don't have anyone right here it's in okay i do i do but there is no i'm not really sure if there is a vignetting right here but all you can see you can see the blur effect yes there is a vignetting right here but the vignetting is so much transparent that you can't really see that's why you have all these edges that is really black now you can see the whole the kind of nice effect it added to this part so that is the part which we are going to end this portrait series and this is at all the process i take whenever i finish my artwork well i'm yet to develop more process that i'm going to use to work on my portrait as the finalizing process so when i develop all this method i'm really going to show you guys how to do all those stuff because there are new things that is really going to be coming up so coming back to the channel name as i told you guys i have already come up with a name so after this video the next video you guys are going to be receiving from this channel it's going to be with a new name 
so and that name is going to be creative pen if you have been following me on facebook youtube and facebook instagram and so on i've already switched the name just waiting to finish this portrait lesson before i switch over to the name so i hope you guys enjoyed this serious video and i hope you really learned something from it and i would love to see you guys paint a nice portrait from this read you have learned so anything outside of that make sure to hit the subscribe button not just the subscribe button ring the bell icon so that you don't miss any new tips and tricks i will be posting every week so see you guys in my next video and don't forget to stay creative